In a previous video, I made this ocean resin coaster, and now I want to give it a flawless top coat. So I'm going to walk you through the steps I take for doing that. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. Now, the finish on it now isn't bad. And if it was just for me, I would be fine with this. I wouldn't complain about this and I would use it and I'd be fine. But if I want to sell my work, I want it to be really as perfect as I can possibly get it. And I want it to have a finish like this that's just completely blemish free and smooth like glass. And I want my edges to be really sharp and crisp. So that's what we're aiming for today. When you pour resin into a mold, just like water does in a glass, along the edge of the piece, the resin creeps up the mold a bit. That's called capillary action. Do you remember that from science class back in the day? Let's take a moment to reflect. <laughs> okay, everyone with me? <laughs> Do you sort of kind of remember? Okay, good. I promise there's no math or anything coming up. That's all the science we have to remember. We're done and we're going back to the fun now. Okay, so you've got this creeping up the walls. And if you move the piece or you manipulate it, let's say to add swirls, etc., or whatever other little pattern you want to make while you're working on it, that creeping will likely be even more pronounced. Now, if you fill the mold all the way to the very tippy top, this doesn't happen because there's nowhere for the resin to creep up. But I don't like that option personally for a couple of reasons. A, more often than not, it's using up more resin that you don't need to use. B, you run the risk of overfilling the mold and then the res resin runs off along one or more of the edges and you still end up having to take care of that when you pop the piece out of the mold. And C, if you end up wanting to add a top coat of resin, you no longer have a convenient lip to contain that top coat. So me, I don't mind the creeping up the wall at all. In fact, I'm grateful for it. Okay, so now the piece is out of the mold. But what do we do next? If you look at the edges here, they're all uneven and jagged and certainly not pretty, except for this one. Because this one I've already worked on and fixed. The other ones are sort of, you know, they have different levels of being not good, but this one's particularly bad because it's got little extra little blips and stuff. So now what we need to do is make all of them as pretty as this edge. And how are we going to do that? Well, my secret weapon is a nail file. And not just any nail file. I use the type that's made for acrylic nails or fake nails. And they're harder and they have a mean grit to them, meaning they're more coarse. The sandpaper is rougher than it would be on your standard nail file. And also they tend to be stiffer, I think. Now, another option is to get something like a paint stir stick, you know, the kind that you get when you're at a paint, uh, paint store, the, you know, those little wooden things they give you, they're usually free when you buy a can of paint. Get something like that and glue sandpaper to that. But if you do it that way, make sure that it's really smooth onto the stick. You want that paper to be as flat as possible. Now, I've put a glove on, so <laughs> then I don't accidentally scratch my nail polish because, you know, I'm such a girl. But I also recommend that you either do this outside and or you wear a mask to cover your nose and mouth. You don't want to breathe in resin dust. Okay, 
Next, I'm going to see if there are any of those little bits like this that I can just snap off or cut off or pull off. But usually I can scratch them off, scrape them off. That's just so I have less work to do with the file. And now I'm going to start filing and I'm gonna use the rougher edge. And for a square piece like this, I'm going to literally just go back and forth. And if you accidentally scratch your actual piece, don't panic. When you're going to put your top coat on, it will correct any blemish that you've got. I can literally mar the surface with my file and you would never know it once I put the top coat of resin on top. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth until I have a completely level edge. And I will do that on all four sides. And when I really see that my edge is completely like a straight perfect line, and that's like that all the way around, then I know that I'm good to go. So what if you have a round piece? You don't want to keep going back and forth, back and forth in the same spot. Now for this one, I've got lots of little thingies to flake off. So I'm going to take care of those. And for those, I can use scissors. This tends to be especially easy to do if your piece hasn't gotten to the rock hard stage yet. If you use scissors, try not to go too far down. You don't want to really eliminate your lip altogether. You want a little bit of a lip left because that's going to help you when you go to put your top coat. Okay, so now I've taken care of all my little high points and I'm going to do the same thing except that I'm not going to go back and forth like this. I'm going to kind of arc like that and I'm going to keep the piece moving so that I don't get any low points with the file or make any sort of gouges in the lip. I want the lip to have a smooth even surface all the way around. So I'll just keep rotating as I file. All right, so now I will inspect the edge, make sure that I have a nice clean line and we can move on to the next step. And I do the same thing for pieces that will become pendants as well. Like this one, it's fine. This is the finish straight out of the mold. All I've done to this so far was file down the edges so that they're smooth and they're not jagged or sharp. And it looks perfectly fine. And I could sell this. But honestly, I think this looks even better. This now has a top coat, which gives it a more professional look. It gives it a nice domed finish, and it just looks extra pristine. If you've got the time and a couple extra drops of resin, this is worth it. And I would mix up a batch of resin just to make a pendant. This is the kind of thing that when I'm doing other work, I will have some pieces nearby that need top coating. And whatever little extra bits of resin I have left over, I'll drop them onto a piece, finish it off, and it's good to go. It's a few days later and I've just finished working on a project and I've got a little bit of resin left over, perfect for top coating these pieces. And I've made sure that the lip is smooth all the way around, that the pieces are level in all directions because that's really important that they're dust free and I've taped little stands to the bottom to keep them 
elevated off the platform in case resin spills over. Now, a huge advantage to having saved the lip and having it contain the top coat for me is that I don't need to tape the sides of the pieces or underneath to prevent little resin drips that can happen when resin runs over the side. It has a tendency to want to form these little drips. This happens when you're doing acrylic pouring also, but I'm not going to have to worry about that because the lip is going to hold the resin for me almost the same exact way as when you tape up the sides and form a dam. The lip is like a little baby tiny dam. Now, if you don't feel confident in your ability to get the resin to stay within the lip, then run some tape along the sides and underneath and bring the tape up just to this line right here. Don't go higher than this line because if you do, then you'll just be creating another scenario when you're gonna cause a lip to form again. So you wanna bring it up right to the edge of the lip so that if resin runs over the side, it'll run down the tape. If it forms drips underneath, when you peel the tape off, it'll come off the sides and the bottom. Because not having drips is kind of important, especially in pieces like peach trees that need to be pretty on both sides. All right, I'm going to glove back up and pour my leftover resin. So I'm going to pour right in the middle and let it spread. And I'm going to stop here. I still have resin left over, but what I want to do now is spread the resin myself so that I can see how much there is and I don't accidentally go overboard. I'm going to bring it right up to the edge, sort of have it kiss the edge and then pull back. And I will do that all the way around. Now I'm working on a Lazy Susan which gives me the advantage of being able to really examine the piece to make sure that I've really gotten the resin to reach every little speck of the edge, every angle possible. Do you see bubbles? Do you see an uneven spot like right here? I see that it's a little uneven, so I'm gonna fix that. And you wanna do that all the way around. Make sure that every edge has resin meeting up to it nicely. And then if you see a piece of dust, you can fish it out, but very often it's invisible in the resin. It won't show. So trying to fish it out sometimes is almost impossible. So just pushing onto it and letting it sink in sometimes takes care of it. At some point, you're gonna to want to run a torch over your piece to make sure there are no bubbles. And when you do that, you are passing the flame really, really quickly, just back and forth, super, super, super quick. And bubbles will pop. And this is a small piece, so that's enough. When you're doing your examination, if you see any parts of the lip still exposed, that's a sign that it can take more resin. So add small amounts at a time. Don't add a whole bunch, just add a little bit at a time and see if that takes care of it. Add the resin, wait a minute for it to level out. And if you can still see the lip, you can add a little bit more. And just keep adding a little bit at a time until the lip is completely covered. After adding some resins, probably not a bad idea to run the torch again, just to make sure you didn't introduce 
any new bubbles. I think I might have just enough for the pendant, so I'm going to do the same thing for the pendant. Pour it in the center. But I don't want to pour until it gets all the way to the edge. I want to bring it to the edge myself. Because if I pour until it reaches the edge on its own, then I run the risk of overflowing. And we don't want that. And for a piece like this, I definitely do want a dome. Since this is going to be a jewelry piece, the dome gives it the look of a cabochon. Totally appropriate for something like this. Quick pass of the torch. And a final examination. Make sure you don't see any dust, any stray bubbles that you didn't catch. If you need to, take a light and shine it on different areas to really give you a good sense of what's going on. And then when you are confident that your edges are just the way you want them, that they are as dust free and bubble free as you can possibly get them to be, then cover them up and put them to bed. Now, my resin had been sitting for a while, so it was relatively bubble free. So I probably don't need to come back and check and do a bubble check in half an hour or so. But if you're using new resin, resin you've just mixed like a couple of minutes ago to do a top coat, you might want to come and check your resin for bubbles because it's more likely to be an issue for a while longer as micro bubbles are still coalescing into bubbles that are visible. But since my resin had been sitting out for a while since I'd been working with an, it for another project, I'm pretty confident that I'm okay. So tomorrow we'll take a look at these pieces and see what we've got. My pieces have now definitely cured enough to handle. They'll be rock hard by the end of the day. This square piece may end up being a coaster, so I didn't want it to have a high dome. Just a glass-like smooth top, you know, with clean, crisp edges. And it turned out well, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now onto the pendant. I loved this before the top coat, but now I am just tickled pink with it. It looks like a piece of glass with some wonderful organic life inside. The shine of the top coat is really, really pretty, and the dome gives it a more polished look, I think. What do you think? Would you do this? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. As it turns out, really scraping the cup for every last drop of resin, I had enough to do one more pendant. Oh, by the way, if you work with resin, make sure to get yourself at least one of these flexible silicone cups. They have changed my life. They're endlessly reusable, all you have to do is let your last drops of resin cure in them overnight and they just pop right out. These cups cost less than a cup of coffee. They hold a hundred milliliters or three and a third ounces. They're not slippery so you get a better grip when you're pouring. The built-in spout is so helpful and as if that wasn't all enough because the bottom is rounded inside, unlike most cups, you can scrape every last drop out of this thing. Seriously, if you buy nothing else for yourself this week, get one of these. Actually, I would recommend getting two so that while one is curing, you know, like the little bits are curing in there overnight, you still have another one that you can use in the meantime. 
Okay, back to the pendant. I wasn't sure about this piece at first. It was just a test piece where I had added a little bit of uh, larger mica particles to see if I could add a little bit of glisten to the petri. But after the top coat, I really like it. I hope you feel empowered to do this now too. And I also hope that you no longer feel that resin lips are the enemy. <laughs> okay, I know how weird that sounded, but you know what I mean. When you pull something out of a mold and it has that lip edge around the top and you're thinking, what are you supposed to do with that? And filing it down, you know, sometimes kind of works, but it never looks just the way you really wish it did. Well, now you have a solution. If you found this video helpful and want to see more like it, take a quick second to give it a thumbs up and share it with everyone you can. And if you're interested in getting more ideas, tips, and information that you can use, make sure to click that subscribe button and then the bell for notifications of every new video. As always, thank you for watching. Go let your creative nature shine. See you next time. Bye now.